Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. This is the Dell Optiplex 745 that someone had put out in the trash and uh, worked fine. Just had to remove a password. Uh, it's got an 80 gigabyte hard drive. Originally had 504 megabytes of RAM and uh, I added a new video card because it just was utilizing the onboard graphics and uh, that shared the existing memory. Uh, but I upgraded the memory to 8 gigabytes and forgot that would not be able to utilize that because it's a 32-bit operating system. If you do 2 to the 32nd power, comes out to a little bit over uh, 4 gigabytes. And that's going to be a little bit less because the operating system is going to use some of the memory. And probably, depending on the manufacturer, maybe the hardware is going to use some of that RAM. So this particular machine here, uh, the operating system is using three gigabytes of RAM. Uh, I have an Intel Core 2 CPU 4400 at two gigahertz, and that's a 64-bit processor. So the next challenge I decided to try is to install a 64-bit operating system. So I've got a copy of Windows 7 Professional here. And I want to upgrade the hard drive. So I've got a one terabyte hard drive here to replace the 80 gigabyte hard drive. Now, from what, I've re what I'm reading online is that not all 64-bit processors are created equal. So there are some features of the microprocessor that uh, you need to verify um, in order to upgrade to a 64-bit system. Now I'll put links to the information uh, that I found uh, in the description. Um, this is readily available if you do a search online. This isn't anything new. But uh, you have to be aware of this. Uh, there are some utilities here that you can use to um, get some answers on whether, whether or not you'll be able to upgrade to a 64-bit system. So, I found a review on this computer, uh, this Optiplex, uh, 2008, so I think they came out around 2008, but I think initially some of the earlier 64-bit CPUs uh, didn't support some of the things that you need to look for. And if you look here, uh, does your CPU have the required features? It mentions a PAE, an SSE2, and NX. And those are some of the features that your processor has to support in order to be able to run a 64-bit system. And there's two ut utilities here. There's a CPU Z, and I ran one that uh, it's right here. I already ran it uh, command line, and this is called coreinfo.exe. And here it says that. Uh, SSE2, SSE3, SS, uh, they're all all supported here. Um, what was the other ones? The other two here were PAE and NX. And the PAE, it says it's supported, and the NX right here, uh, no execute page protection. And I guess some of these are help prevent uh, hacking. Um, but there's another one here, CPU Z. I don't think I've run this one. I was looking at it the other day. Um, set up in English, 32 and 64 bit versions. So, how do you know if any of this is uh, malware or something? But uh, CPU Z seems like a legitimate uh, website, famous last words. So they've got set up here or a zip file. Um, you know, if you get the free 30 day or 60, 60 day version of WinZip, you could use that. So it's just going to download this. And it looks like it's a prettier uh, format to, to review the information on the microprocessor. Let's wait for this to open up and I'll install it. 
So the worst thing that can happen is uh, I can't install the 64-bit Windows 7 and then I just put the 80 gigabyte hard drive with Windows XP back in. But I thought I'd give this a try. I don't currently have an opera a 64-bit operating system on, on any computers. So I'll install this. Create an icon. Finished. So it looks like this came up here. It's not what it was showing in that article. Let's see if I run it from uh, the icon. Here it is, CPU-Z. Actually, didn't that say CPU ID? So you can see here instructions MMX, SSE, SSE2, 3, EM64T. Um, hold on, because I'm looking for the NX. Now, in the article here, it says that. Um, EM64T should indicate that PAE is supported and VTX or VTD always indicates that NX is supported. Uh, I don't see that, but in the um, core info, it actually shows that. So, But it does say in some computers you have to enable NX in the BIOS, so... Um, I don't know why this is here. There seems to be some discrepancy between those two utilities. So here I think this is saying that it has NX support. I might have to go check on the BIOS to see what's going on there. So here's a quick overview of, these, of those features. Uh, no execute NX. It's a processor feature that allows memory pages to be marked as non-executable. The feature enables the CPU to help guard the system from attacks by malicious software. Um, the Intel defined execute disable XD bit feature on AMD, it's defined no execute NX page protection processor feature. Uh, physical address extension, PAE. The processor must be running in physical address extension mode to use the NX processor feature. Uh, streaming SIMD extension 2, all processors that support NX also support streaming SIMD extension 2. So I don't know, it's saying I have that, but I don't see a reference to NX. Uh, in one of the utilities. One utility says I have NX and the other one says uh, I don't. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and give it a try and see what happens. Installing a 64-bit version of Windows 7. So even if your microprocessor supports SSE2, EM64T, and VT-X or the NX, uh, there is another important factor, and that's whether, you're not, whether or not you've got 64-bit drivers. And from what I can uh, find online, uh, there are supposedly 64-bit drivers for the Optiplex 745. Uh, I guess you use the Vista 64-bit uh, drivers, and uh, they work. So I'm going to go ahead and install the one terabyte hard drive and open up this box of Windows 7 and see if I can go through a fresh install of a 64-bit uh, Windows 7 professional. So all I need to do, well let me, first thing is unplug it. Need to take out this hard drive. It's got a fan assembly that goes on to the hard drive. So I need to install that. So I need to unplug this. 
So say to drive and plug that in the power. And figure out looks like they just have it slide in. Some something that they've attached to the hard drive. No? Let's see. Just looking at these wheels here. Looks like they need to slide in, but that goes this way. This goes that way. Should have probably gone online to see how to remove hard drive. Oh, looks like there's some more blue tabs give you a clue. I notice these here, these two, so maybe it just drops out from one end if you press these. Yep. Wow, that was easy. Some more dust I can clean off. Let me get the new hard drive. So here's the new one. Hopefully it'll fit in. So here's the 80 gigabyte hard drive and here's the one terabyte. Looks like they're the same physical size. So they should this should snap into this this bracket here. I like this the way this sits in. I thought I had to disassemble this somehow. This just falls right in. There's one, there's two. It's in there. Just need to reconnect this cable and the power cable. Wow, that couldn't be that couldn't be any more easier. It's a nice design. Wow, that was easy. Okay, so just need to go ahead and open this. Hopefully it's not a bootleg copy. <laughs> So here's the 64-bit disk. Press F1 to reboot. So, so far so good. I've got the 64-bit disk in there. The Windows 7 Professional. Well, it's installed, and it's recognizing the 8 gigabytes of memory now. 64-bit operating system. Sweet. So I don't have audio, so I need to step through all the drivers, and uh, I think I'll start off first with the video, and go from there. Well, that's it. I now have a Dell Optiplex 745 with a 64-bit operating system Windows 7 one terabyte hard drive 8 gigabytes of memory a nice video card with uh, one gigabyte of memory and the install was pretty uh, smooth it wasn't that difficult the only problem was with the sound drivers and the uh, Optiplex Vista 64-bit sound drivers work other than that uh, with the installation from the uh, Windows 7 CD, it, 
installed all the drivers. I didn't have any of those yellow triangles with what is it, like an exclamation point in it on, you know, if I looked in device manager, the only problem was, was with the uh, sound driver and uh, found that online. Uh, I'll put a link in, in the description for all those drivers, but um, I updated them anyways. Uh, I didn't get any of those uh, messages that said the current driver is newer than uh, the one you're trying to install. So uh, I installed all the Vista drivers anyways and to uh, see what would happen and if they if there was a conflict they just didn't install. So again you can see here it's an Intel Core 2 CPU 4400 2 gigahertz processor 8 gigabytes of memory 64 bit operating system. And I was just looking at this article here online from PC Mag. Uh, the support for the security updates for Windows 7 is going to extend uh, through to 2020. And what's interesting is that uh, at the right at the the date on this uh, publishing of this article here, January 13th, 2015, 27.69% uh, of the global PCs were still running Windows XP. So it's hard to get people to uh, move from. Windows XP so again uh, up until January 14th 2020 still well, Microsoft will still be providing security updates for Windows 7 so this is a nice uh, small form factor PC Optiplex 745 I think I'll put the monitor on top of this nice 64 bit system thanks for watching And if you found this video interesting, please like, subscribe, and or comment, and see you next video.